My name is Michael Peluso. How's it going? I'm a, I'm a 42-year-old glass blower, and I guess in my early life, I, um, I was born in York, Pennsylvania in 1979 to, uh, to two loving parents, and I have a brother. So I was always uh, trying to do bridge jumping or something, so my parents were always trying to keep me from um, uh, being clumsy and breaking bones and things. But, uh, but now I think I'd say I had a pretty common Pennsylvania um, uh, childhood from uh, you know, 79 to you know, late 80s early 90s, um, yeah. So now I'm gonna put this glass rod into the fire. And I'll just shove it in there. And I'll start heating up the end of this. Now as that glass heats up, it starts to enact that property of that morphic material more and more, the hotter it gets. So the hotter it gets, the more it acts like liquid. I wanted to be an architect. I always wanted to be an architect. I love building things. I love creating things. Even from a young age, my, my parents gave me a five pound box of nails and I put all the nails into like one two by four. So I just always like to create things. Um, but unfortunately I wasn't really great at math. I was good at math, but not architecture good at math. So uh, um, in college, in my freshman year of college, I realized I wasn't gonna be an architect and I changed my major several times, seven times altogether, I believe. So the volume is less, but my glass is thick and now I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna get my mouth on the end of the tube, right? You know, where the tube looks to be glowing. Yeah. It's not hot here, darling. No. It's hot up here, but light is traveling through the glass to make it appear yeah. hot down there. Is that mouth right here? I'll blow a little harder. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. The harder you blow. Uh -huh. And then I just, I was tending bar, um, serving at TGI Fridays, and uh, I just decided to take a glass blowing class on a whim because it sounded interesting. And I um, took the class and I, I remember when uh, James Lord took the glass out of the furnace and I stared at it for 20 seconds and I'm like, holy crap, that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. And it was, you know, like, like uh, the clouds parted, angels came out, ah, it was a moment. Um, but yeah, no, I, um, I, I, I knew instantly, there was no, there was no question um, that uh, glass wasn't of an interest to me, so I, 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 I was hooked from then. So you want to make sure everything is evenly heated and see it get a little bit smaller so you know you can get it a little bit bigger. Okay. Because this glass heats up quickly and it cools down quickly. We were heating it forever to get that thermal mass. Yeah. Now it's so thin for me to heat it and try to blow it out, it doesn't have any material to get the thermal mass. Um, they say it's getting bit by the glass bug, but you really just are obsessed with it and you want to get more. And there's just so many angles and avenues to go with glass. Um, and, and being a little scattered brained as I am, I couldn't find exact, I still don't know what I want to do. Um, so I still jump around a whole bunch, you know, doing, because you, you could end up being wanting to do a fuser. You could take glass plates and fuse them together and then slump them into a form. You could spend your whole entire career doing that. Um, and not ever pick up a blowpipe and actually blow glass, but still make beautiful work. And a fuser really won't know what a glass blower does. Like, what's a glass blower doing? Even though they're very, very, very similarly related. Um, and that's completely different from a caster, different from a cold worker, different from someone that does pat de verre, um, or, or you know, even microwave fusing, or you know, there's so many different uh, types of glass. Um, so I'm still, I'm still exploring. I, I, I do like to do a lot of the stuff at the uh, um, torch because one, it's uh, less costly and it's more immediate gratification. Love the furnace. Unfortunately, the furnace, the big giant glass plane, it, it's costly. So you really you can't just make glass to make glass. You, you gotta sell it. Um, and yeah, so that's, I'm, I'm still, still trying to find out where the glass is gonna take me. Now. That glass is super thin, check that. Oh, it sure is. Because it's thin, it won't cut you or anything. And that thin glass won't just tube off. Oh, I love it. And now we have an open form. Now, I'm not a really religious person, but I would call myself more of a spiritual person. Um, like I know there's something greater than me, and always glass has led me in the right direction always led me in the right direction in life. Um, and I don't really know what that direction is yet, but, um, but I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> so I'll gather some glass here. I'm just gonna let this lay here. And I get it in the glass and I start turning. 
this first cab is going to have a lot of bubbles on it. The glass is a little chilly, so I'm getting a little bit more glass than I would normally get. You were kind of doing this with those graphite paddles. Now I trapped air into the blowpipe. I'm trapping it with my thumb. My thumb's on the end of it, and you'll see a bubble start to blow out of the top. Yep. And that's called capping the glass. And now I got my glass, and I'm gonna kind of push it down. What I'll do is I'll get more glass on top of this. And I'll get some color. Oh, yeah. Fire. What color is that? Cobalt blue color. Patriotic. But I'm going to show you organized color pattern. So my journey through class, how did I get from um, that, that point A of being in the... Um, being in, in, in the community college in Harrisburg, looking at it for the first time, falling in love with it, to, to point, I would call this point C maybe, um, having my own studio, teaching a lot of classes. It's a long road. Glass blurs, you don't, I mean, there's two really ways. You, you, you go to school um, and you work underneath someone and you continuously work and work and work um, until you build the skills up from them and then you have enough money, you go to a bank, get it, and you, you buy equipment. I, I went about glass a different way. I really like the furnace work, so I actually I stayed at a community college until they more or less asked me to leave um, in, a, in a nice way. But I got a lot of skills there because you don't learn how to blow glass overnight. This is not something you can do every, every Tuesday for two hours for six months and get it. You're doing it every day for six months for four or five hours to get just your basic skills down to then know what you want to do with those basic skills. So most glass blowers, it really takes them 15, maybe 20 years, I think, to get established and really make decent money. I think everyone should experience glass. Everyone. The same way that everyone has wood shop where you, where you whittle a piece of wood. I, I would like to see everyone experience glass in the world just one time. Um, maybe not by me, but by someone. Um, and, and seeing that come to fruition in a way that's grander um, than what I've already done. I'm gonna start glowing. Now, heat again. So this color, actually I thought it was a cobalt blue. This is an iris blue. So this actually what does what's called reduction. Gases will steal certain elements from the glass, causing the metals to rise to the surface in the color. So certain colors can go from blue to a metallic -y silver. So um, I, I would like to see more people blow glass. So I think ultimately some sort of giant nonprofit inner city school where just, you know, we're finding the next Dale Chihuly or Dante Marioni or you know, William Gutenrath or, you know, some of these, some of these amazing glass blowers um, that in their own rights do their own thing. I, I would like to see people be as excitable as I am about glass. Um, and what's cool is when, when I'm a 68 year old dude, um, most companies might be like, hey, it's time for you to retire. Most glass blowers and most people be hopefully beating down my door to know what I've acquired over the last, you know, 40, seven years of blowing glass. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's the end result. Uh, more education, bigger facility. Um, I wouldn't mind being, you know, have a, a monthly blog where I could talk to people about glass, interact with them. There. When I teach classes, I, I like to talk a little bit about thermal mass. It's kind of like my, my catch tag line. Um, and what thermal mass really is, it's an idea I still in my students where glass is all about heat. Glass is all about controlling that heat content in the glass. So you have to gather up your heat as well as gathering up the material. But if you don't have your heat in your glass, you can't do anything. And, and, and thermal mass is right now. It's, it's, it's in this very second. It's not like, it's like if we're having brain surgery and we're like, oh, hey, we have a bleeder here. That, that assistant went and dilly-dally to the side of the room, get a little four-step clip and dilly-dally back to stop that bleeder and that 
that that brain surgery. No, they're moving and they're doing it fast. This is like like you know, time is money. And that's the same thing with thermal mass. Like you have to get your heat in the glass and then utilize that heat. And from there, um, you can make something. You can make your vase or your your cup or whatever you want to make. Just like a big pizza pie. I'll bring this out of the kiln, sitting at the glory hole, and I'll spin, 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 and I'll get it to flare open into a plate. But then from a plate, I'm gonna form it into a taco shell. And then I'll put it in my kiln. So if you tell people how important glass is, it's not, oh, thermal mass is important. No, it's thermal mass! It's important! We'll do it now. 